a.m. and all's well in Shale City, Colorado. Ladies and gentlemen, Paramount Pictures proudly present Mr. Brian Donlevy, Mr. William Holden, and Miss Ellen Drew in The Remarkable Andrew with the Messrs. Montague Love, Porter Hall, Richard Webb, Rod Cameron, and the Misses Nydia Westman and Francis Gifford. The novel and screenplay are by Dalton Trumbo, produced by Richard Blumenthal, and directed by Stuart Heisler. <laughs> That's over. Andrew Long still lives in Shale City, and there are still people in the town who tap their heads at the mention of his name. Oh, the boy on the bicycle isn't Andrew. We'll get to him later. Now, the truth of the matter is that there are a lot of things people don't understand. Take the Einstein theory. Take taxes. Take love. Do you understand them? <laughs> Neither do I. But they exist. They happen. Just as the strange adventure of Andrew Long happened. If you've ever been caught talking to yourself, you'll understand. Or if you've ever... But wait a minute. Here's Andrew. It all began some time ago on the morning of June 2nd, 1941. Morning, Mrs. Grandis. Oh, hello, Andrew. Good morning, Peg. Huh? Oh, uh, morning, Andrew. Okay. You're going to be late one of these mornings, Peggy. How are you feeling? A little sleepy. How to get to bed earlier? Couldn't. Had a date last night. Have a good time? Oh, pretty. Hello, Joe. Hello. Hi, Andrew. It's Peggy. Don't you even want to know who I had a date with? Oh, I guess so. That is, if you want to tell me. Randall Stevens. Oh, him. You needn't say it like that. He's the best dancer in Shale City. Well, he spends enough time at it. He asked me to marry him. He did, huh? Imagine a guy like that thinking he could marry a girl like you. Aren't you going to ask me what I told him? I know. You told him you couldn't marry him because you're going to marry me. Yes, that's what I told him. 
Randall says he doesn't understand why you and I don't get married instead of just talking about it all the time. Well, it's none of his business. Besides, when I make another two fifty a week, we'll be married. I suppose so. It does seem like a long time. I mean, I mean, a lot of people get married on... Yes, and a lot of people get divorced. A good businessman never makes a contract unless he's sure he can carry it through. Yet every fool on earth is perfectly willing to sign a marriage contract without considering whether he can live up to it or not. Well, not me. You haven't forgotten about the dance tonight, have you? Dance? It's a country club dance. Oh, no. How could I forget? You might. I'm balancing the city books for the last fiscal year today. But don't you worry. I'll be ready when you are. Well, there isn't any danger of your not striking a balance, is there? I mean, something that would keep you working into the night. Oh, of course not. Three years in a row on the dot? All right, then. But if anything should happen, I'll never forgive you, Andrew Long. Never. Look, I said I'd be ready, didn't I? I'm going to break a record for the fourth time today. And I'm going to dance with you all night tonight. Oh, good morning, Randall. Good morning. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Randall. Thanks for taking Peggy out last night. I hope you didn't mind. Oh, not at all. Why should I? If she were my girl, I would. Well, if she were your girl, you should. Wish me luck on that book, son. Good luck. Mr. Baker? Andrew? Morning, Andrew. Morning, Mr. Grant. Martha? Morning, Andrew. Hello, Harry. Morning, Andy. Hi, Jim. Morning, Miss Halsey. Good morning, Mr. Long. Good morning, Andrew. Morning, Miss Van Buren. Lovely day, isn't it? Perfect. Wonderful day. You mean it's a wonderful day just because there's lots of work to do? Sure, I like it. Balancing the fiscal year today. Did you win? Fourteen minutes ahead of last year. What do you do now? Award yourself a medal? No, I... I just have the satisfaction of having done it a little faster, that's all, Miss Halsey. Oh, I didn't mean to wisecrack. You see, it's sort of a game with me. Its whole object is to prove that two plus two equals four. That seems to make sense, but you'd be surprised at the number of people who try to stretch it to five. Hello, Mr. Slocum. Not here. I heard the noise stop. All done? Yes. Balance? Well, I haven't checked yet, but I've balanced all right. Hmm. Oh, I, I'm $1,240 off. I can't understand it. I, it's beyond me. I. Oh, you got going too fast and slipped up somewhere. Oh, no. I, I always go fast, Mr. Slocum. I never make mistakes. I, I'll get it all right. Don't you worry. Oh, well, take your time. Let's show up. Get me 
Sam Savage in the purchasing department. I don't care what bar he's in. Get him. Look, I knew I didn't make a mistake. Somebody's torn three checks out of the back of the book. I know, I know. I've just come from Sam Savage's. He took them and forgot to notify us. You know how he is when he's got a little hangover. Yeah, but what about the canceled checks? They didn't come with the statement. Sam took them out of the envelope before you got them. He's making a beef about the deal. Materials didn't come up to specifications. Now, here's the dope. You just fill in the stubs. <coughs> the first one's to uh, Robert Ambrose, Incorporated, Denver, $225. Second one's the same, $650. Third one, ditto, $365. What are the warrant numbers? Well, I'll get them for you later. All right, what's the item? Item? Sure, what did the checks buy? Oh. oh, building materials, repairs on the firehouse. You just put that down and Sam will give you an itemized account later. strike a balance with those figures. Why not? Because that $1,240 for those three checks is drawn against the general fund. And it should come out of the fire department fund. All the same thing. It adds up. Your job's to get a balance, and you got it. But I didn't get a balance. Well, I don't know what else you can call it. I can see it with my own eyes. So-and-so here, so-and-so there. Balance. Perfect. Well, I'll still have to hold up the report until I figure out this fire department thing. Now, look. You forget about this and let me handle it. I'll fix it up later. I can't do that. Why not? Because I'm a bookkeeper. And that wouldn't be bookkeeping. Say, who's hiring you anyhow? The taxpayers. Well, are you gonna let that balance be or the taxpayers are gonna find somebody who will? Are you threatening to fire me? I'm not threatening, I'm going to. Unless you let those books be as they are. I can't do that, Mr. Slocum. Oh, now look, kid. I'm sorry I got sore. You're saving up to get married. You don't want to fly off the handle like that. This is a pretty good job, and I like your work. Good evening, Al. Good evening, Andrew. All finished? Uh, yes, they just balanced. Good. Now let me have the sheets, and I'll go over them tonight. Get them ready for tomorrow's council meeting. I can't let you have them, Mr. McCall. These sheets are incorrectly balanced. He's crazy. Well, there's a little technicality, some trouble in the purchasing department, but nothing to worry about. I told him that I'd take full responsibility. But that's not enough. It's my responsibility. I put those figures in the general ledger, and if you take them up before the city council, then it's my figures that are accepted, and they're wrong. I appreciate your scrupulousness in the matter. However, I think you may take Art's word that the full responsibility is his. I might also add that I, too, as city treasurer, will be responsible, so you have nothing to worry about. I'm not worrying about me. I'm worrying about the books. And if you insist on taking this balance before I make it right, I'll have to take it up with the city council myself. My dear boy, I, I'm afraid you're letting your temper run away with your good judgment. I am suspending you as of tonight, pending an investigation of your books. Good night. Mm. 